are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. IELTS Band 7 Grammar Features. Hello there, my name is Ben Worthington. In this tutorial, we're looking at Band 7 Features, mainly for the writing. And we're going to look not only at the importance of these band descriptors. We're going to look at aiming for a band seven and above. We're going to look at understanding complex structures, advanced grammatical structures, and the role of punctuation. So again, as per normal, this is a high value tutorial. No waffle, no chit chat, just solid study. Grab a pen, make notes, make sure you remember this stuff. Let's get started. Now, with the IELTS exam, a lot of students, amazingly to me, they never even look at the band descriptors. Now you need to look at these descriptors because if you are going for a band seven, that's almost like a map. You've got to look, you've got to see what the examiner is expecting from you. You need to know what level you're probably at and where you and what you need to do to get to the level you want to be at. So have a look. They're not only crucial for the grammar, but they'll also be valuable for lexical resource, task response. And this is the case for both task one and task two. And also just review them for the speaking. It'll just help you understand what the examiner's looking for when they're reviewing your work. Now with our, I think that's my little boy who wants to get on this podcast. <laughs> Maybe it will be, but at the moment uh, he's not allowed. It's probably why he's screaming. Anyway, um, I wanted to mention the online essay checker we are, have um, at IELTSpodcast.com can help you, can speed up your progress in this because you're going to get an estimated band score. Now, if you want a more accurate estimation, then you need to upgrade to the premium one and we'll, we will measure more data points. And just one admission, and this hurts me, being a native English speaker from Britain, this hurts me a lot. But I've discovered that if you use American if you set it to American spellings and grammar, it's a little bit more accurate. And this hurts me because obviously I want to write in British English, but we're working on trying to improve it. Right then, if you're going for a band seven, which is probably the most uh, common one, uh, you know, if you're going for immig immigration, professional purposes, or even if you're studying, it's essential to aim higher than a band seven. So essentially you're setting yourself a goal of a band eight, okay? If you're in a rush, maybe you just set it a little bit higher and go for a band seven. The reason is, um, there's two reasons. One is it's just logical, you know, to aim higher than you actually have to go. So you force yourself to over-prepare and then this will save you money okay because you know if you're over preparing you're going to um you won't present for the exam until you you comfortably get in a band 7.5 now a lot of students they they'll aim for a seven they might just scrape that seven in one exam but because they've been trying so hard and focusing so hard on the writing they let the reading skills slip or they just totally neglected their speaking skills and then they do the exam and they get that seven they focus so hard on they get that seven in the writing and in the meantime their reading skills have slipped and so they're back where they started from and this explains a lot of the frustration whereas if they'd have just set their goal for the 7.5 it might have taken a little bit longer it might have been more difficult but they set the goal for the 7.5 and obviously they're still maintaining their reading, speaking, listening skills, then it's far more likely you'll just take the one exam 
rather than the IELTS casino, rather than taking it again, again, and again, and again, and putting money in the British Council, which none of us want to do. <laughs> now, the second reason why I strongly suggest you go for a band seven is because these band scores are a little bit misleading. This is what I found in my career as an IELTS tutor. And ex-IELTS examiners have confirmed this. You see, on paper, it looks like going from band five to band six would be just as hard as going from band six to band seven. And likewise, going from band six to 6.5 should be as easy as going from 6.5 to band seven. However, from experience, the jumps going from 5 to 5.5 .5 to 6 to 6.5, most students can do that relatively quickly until they get to 6.5. And this is why so many students get stuck at 6.5. You see, the jump from 6 to 6.5 is usually far easier and quicker than the jump from 6.5 to 7. And likewise, the jump from 7 to 7.5 or even to 8 is probably even bigger again. So this is why it's essential to go to aim for a 7.5 in your writing, even if you just need a band seven, because it's going to push you to over prepare and you'll be better prepared for this larger jump that is needed. And just to sum it up, you know, aim for the stars, you might reach the moon. So following that advice, you're going to save some money and also not to mention that horrible predicament, that horrible situation of going to do, going and doing IELTS again and again and again, the frustration, the nerves, it's tiring and nobody deserves that. Point number four I want to mention, understanding complex structures. Complex structures are sentences with more than one subject and verb. Common examples include sentences with connectors like and and but, although and relative clauses. For instance, while there, are while there are advantages, the disadvantages are greater. So there we've, we've got that clause. We started off with the, the conjunction while and you need to get to grips with these complex sentences, with the clauses, with the relative clauses, the subordination, all of that. On one hand, you, do, you don't have to learn the whole grammatical theory behind it. You can just start getting comfortable with writing it and understanding it more sort of like on a natural level. However, on the other hand, learning the formal rules may help you. Learning the formal rules and different structures to copy paste may help you. It depends what kind of learner you are and it's your responsibility to figure it out yourself. Okay, do I learn better with videos? Do I learn better when I just focus on the grammar rules? Do I learn better just by action and just getting writing and getting, uh, you know, and taking action and just doing rather than receiving? So it's up to you. Most, um, a lot of students learn different from their colleagues. So it's up to you just to figure out what works better for you. But please don't fall into the trap of just vegetating on the couch like a couch potato. <laughs> just watching YouTube or watching TikToks about IELTS it's not going to help you it might sound like you're getting some value but the the real value is you know putting pen to paper taking action getting feedback and actively learning that's why I, I usually say grab a pen take notes and you'll be improving your listening skills and getting some solid useful advice now then, advanced grammatical structures. Three useful ones I'm going to mention briefly. Participle clauses. These start with active part participles like ing or past participles like ed. And they, they're just higher level points. So for example, having worked with children, I have learned. Okay. So these are just some quick advanced grammatical structures you can use in your next writing. Inversion. Now, this involves starting a sentence with a negative adverb or using only if or only when. 
here's an example rarely do we see parents of only when parents teach will children learn and these are sort of like the stylistic elements I've mentioned um, in a previous tutorial you know the stylistic elements the band seven eight and nine students will be incorporating into their essays fortunately there is a shortcut to using all of these um, all of these structures and plenty more when you when you use a framework that has these baked in then it's far easier to not only use them in your essay writing uh, you're forced to use them in your essay writing but they sound more natural and you know you're using them in a low risk kind of like version because you've got the structure already there and you're just dropping in your ideas or the vocabulary so it's very important is very valuable especially if you're in a hurry to pass now these band nine frameworks um, you can get them in the course and to get the course at a tremendous discount you go to the essay checker we have online the online essay checker and then you sign up and you'll get a series of emails with some offers which offer the course the band nine frameworks course at a tremendous discount now the final structure is fronting these sentences start with an it clause for example it is the responsibility of they're quite straightforward you probably wouldn't think that they are advanced grammatical structures but this is why it's um you know it's important to get some solid advice so you know what you're writing again our band nine frameworks have these phrases in them already so it's far more straightforward Final point before we conclude this tutorial, punctuation and the role of commas. Punctuation plays a vital role in writing. Overusing and or underusing the commas can disrupt the flow of your writing. This is why I'm not a big fan of um, Grammarly. When I used Grammarly last time, it shoved commas in everywhere and I was like, that's totally not necessary. Google Docs, in my experience, is a far more um, balanced viewpoint, a, a, far, a far more balanced use, suggests a far more balanced use of commas and punctuation. Of course, it's not perfect, uh, but it is, in my opinion, is superior. So, again, get used to using these, experiment, put them into your essay, take them out of your essay, get the feedback, experiment and eventually you will find a balance so that's it in conclusion mastering these complex structures understanding punctuation aiming higher than you actually than you actually need reviewing the band descriptors are all these sort of like steps you need to make sure that you're going to score a band seven or higher now if you are struggling with the IELTS exam, then you're in the right place because at the moment we've got the essay checker, which checks your essay using artificial intelligence, gives you an estimated score. You can do this for free. If you want a more detailed feedback, then you can uh, upgrade. It's like nine dollars. And with this, you can you don't even have to write new essays. You can just find your old essays, put them through and you'll be able to see the score you'll be able to work on those ones rather than starting from zero. Second, you need this because if you're in a rush if you've got your exam coming up in the ne in the next week then you might not have the luxury to wait a day two days to get the feedback from a human essay corrector. With the online one you can get quick and easy feedback. Third, when you do upgrade you're going to get the opportunity to get all our courses all our courses including the band nine frameworks which you'll find just instantly upgrade your essay and they're relatively simple to use you just drop in your ideas and the vocabulary that you want to use on your topic and the essay is half written and i say half written because you know you do need to do this various times to get comfortable with it i would be lying if I said just get the frameworks and you're done you get a band nine and you're off to Scotland you're off to 
Toronto. That would be dishonest of me. So you get what really happens is you get the frameworks. You write an essay using these frameworks. And it's difficult. It's probably difficult the first time you do it. But then you write a few more and you start getting used to the structure. You start getting more feedback. You start making it your own. And that's where the rapid improvement happens. Now, if you need any more help, then just go to ieltspodcast.com. And while we're talking about automatic essay corrections, actually, if you're a developer, if you're a smart developer, and you probably are if you're listening to this tutorial, <laughs> if you're a smart developer and you're skilled with AI, with machine learning, with Python, with Langchain, Langflow, and all of this new, and GPT, all of this new beautiful technology, then get into contact. We're going to build the best speaking app for IELTS students the world has ever seen. It's going to be mock exam, then you're going to have drills, and basically going to transfer all the knowledge in my speaking confidence course, and you're going to be able to you know, interact, we're going to be able to do the drills, which improve your fluency, improve your coherence, you're going to get all the techniques, and you're actually going to be able to use them in this new tool. But I need a developer, I need somebody skilled to partner with to get this project up and running. We've got an MVP out, we're moving quickly, but ideally, you know, you'll be able to join us. And the main goal, the main goal is First, we're going to dominate IELTS. We're going to help all the students that cannot afford a speaking tutor. They are finally going to get what they deserve, which is inexpensive speaking help, inexpensive speaking tutorials, probably even free, just like we did with our essay checker. This is going to help students in remote areas. This is going to help students who cannot access a tutor, who doesn't have the luxury of having a native English speaker in their village, in their town. This is going to help the students who cannot even afford to have a native English tutor or a tutor for that matter. This is going to help the students that are unfairly disadvantaged because of where they are or what they earn. And these students deserve, just like all the rest of us, deserve to be able to study in Canada, in the UK, in Australia. And they can't do it because they can't afford uh, a tutor. So they're not able to take the IELTS. So they're not able to get to Canada, to, to Australia, wherever. And it's time it ends, basically. It's time it ends. First, we're going to help the IELTS students. And then we're going to move on to general English. That's the roadmap. I want smart people. If you're interested, then send us an email to ben at ieltspodcast.com. Put developer in capital letters in the subject line. And we'll jump on a call. And we're moving fast with this. We're moving fast. It's a big road map on it. And you know, we a beautiful day. Keep moving. And you can do this. You're going to pass the miles eventually. Just keep your head down. Keep working. And you'll get there. Thanks for listening to IELTSpodcast.com.